Greetings, everybody, and the not so fine. How do you do? As uh, most of you are probably aware, in the last couple of months we lost uh, a couple of giants in the comic book world. Uh, Dick Ayers and uh, Al Feldstein, or some people like to say Al Feldstein. Um, Dick Ayers is, of course, remember, prim you know, primarily as being the creative force behind the <clears throat> original Ghost Rider back in 1950, and again for reviving it when he was at Marvel in 1967, where it lasted about seven issues. And uh, Dick Ayers was just a great uh, artist and inker. He inked a lot of um, uh, a lot of Kirby, at least Kirby covers and Kirby art. You know, and primarily I think for the Fantastic Four. Um, but he also did a lot of the penciling in the 1950s uh, pre-Marvel company Atlas, where he did. Uh, uh, Journey in the Mystery, Strange Tales, uh, Unknown Worlds, Menace, just to, just to name a few. I mean, there were, there were a lot of them. Marvel had a lot of different uh, horror mystery comics. Uh, I mean, you know, when it was Atlas in the 50s. And another one was uh, Mystery Tales that Dick Ayers did uh, penciling for. And uh, also, he did, uh, he spent about, I think maybe roughly a dozen years or 10 to 12 years doing uh, Sergeant Fury. He was the primary penciler on Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos. And uh, I got, I showed you this before. This is the original Ghost Rider created by Dick Ayers. He was the primary creator behind this. This is in 1950 when, uh, for Magazine Enterprises. And then he revived the character again, or Marvel, you know, was convinced, you know, Dick Ayers owned the rights to this anyway, so he, uh, they produced it, or revived it again in 1967. You can see the, I mean, exactly the same, exactly the same. And I think the only reason it lasted six issues is because Marvel had some concerns over who really owned, you know, that character, and they just stopped publishing it, you know. I don't think it had too much to do with sales, maybe a little bit, but at any rate, Dick Ayers, man, just an all-around uh, great penciler, inker, and he's going to be sorely missed. And then we have uh, Al Feldstein. Um, You know, back in 1955, when EC Comics Line folded, the only comic to survive out of that was uh, Mad. And the only reason that Mad survived is because they decided to uh, uh, turn that into, uh, publish it as a black and white magazine, and therefore they avoided the restrictions that would have been imposed upon them by the code. And uh, Harvey Kurtzman, I think, was editor there for about a year. And then in 1956, Al Feldstein took over. And he, under his editorial directorship, he turned, magazine, he turned Mad Magazine into an American pop culture icon of parody. And uh, it's been that way ever since. It had, at some point, I think, in the 1970s, they were selling like... Uh, over two million copies of that every month. It's just amazing the work that he did on that under his director uh, and under his editorial directorship. And of course, Al Feldstein in the 1950s, a lot of the EC horror comics. He was responsible for the stories and even the artwork on many of the covers. Uh, here is one of the covers I want to show you. Let me take it out of my case. It's not in the greatest shape, but it's signed by Al Feldstein, and it's Shock Suspense Stories, number seven. And this is just one of the great EC classic covers, where uh, you can see the reflection of a guy being struck by lightning in the window. 
His face is melting. Got it signed by Al Feldstein. So he was just an amazing, amazing talent, Al Feldstein. He uh, he wrote, he drew, he inked. Great editor. I mean, just amazing. They're all going to be uh, sadly missed. Um. So, oh, you know what? I'm going to have uh, so when Gimpy was here, he brought this uh, shot glass over for me. The Gimpy shot glass. From Chinatown. Give me a little souvenir. This is the first time that I unpacked it, and I'm going to have a little uh, kind of early in the day. Right now, time over here is about 11:30. I got to be careful with this stuff, man. I mean, it's you know <laughs> dangerous stuff, but. Uh, Here's to Alan Dick. Oh. My condolences to the families and whew. They're gonna be saying the condolences to me in a minute if I have another sip of that. And uh well if there is such a thing as a soul, I hope their souls are completely rested at peace. Moving on to a somewhat happier note. <coughs> wow. Holy smokes. That stuff is powerful. Oh. I feel like the <coughs> I feel like the human torch. Whoa. Gonna be on fire in a minute. On a happier note, <clears throat> I wanted to give a shout out to uh, a newcomer. Uh, he's 11 years old and uh, he hails out of Ireland. His name is Luke. Uh, his handle on YouTube is called Just Luke, and I'll leave a uh, link in the description box for him. And I like to shout out uh, the kids, you know, primary kids between, you know, eight, nine to 15 years old because they're like the future of uh, of comic book fandom, you know. I mean, there's not as many uh, as of that demographic coming into a comic book collecting as there used to be. I mean, there used to be millions in the 40s and 50s and then hundreds of thousands in the 60s and it keeps on getting lower and lower. Most of the primary uh, age group now, I think, is in the 20s and 30s, you know, but uh, where's the future going to be without getting these uh, younger people into the collecting community, you know? So I always try to encourage uh, kids while they're that age to get into comic books. And uh, he did a, uh, 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 Luke did a, uh, uh, his first video review of uh, Batman Arkham City. Which is a it, it's a game, and I'm not into games at all. But <clears throat> what interested me about that was the fact that it also contains a statue, and it has the uh, Batman: The Dark Knight animated uh, original animated film. I think from 20 I think it's from 2011. I'm not sure. But those things I am very much interested in, and it was a nice box set. So if I can find that somewhere, you know, at a reasonable price, I'm going to buy it. And that's his fault that I got, I'm going to be spending money now on something that I don't even I don't even play the game. So I'll probably give the game away to somebody if I can find it at a good price. You know, I don't want to. I know the game is probably the most expensive part of it, but uh, we'll see what happens. But at any rate, uh, so I would. Uh, what I would like, you know, what I would ask, and I don't really ask a lot of things from people. Here's uh, the deal. Um, I was in contact with Luke's father because Luke had told me uh, about uh, how his father was going to take him to the Comic Con in New York if they could. Uh, I think see, I think it might be the Big Apple Con or Big Apple Con or the uh, New York Comic Con. I'm not sure which one of them. But there's two of them going on. And, 
and uh, if he gets 100 subs by August 1st, his dad's going to take him from Ireland all the way to New York for the Comic-Con. And, man, that's got to be something awesome for, for a kid 11 years old. I never even had the opportunity to go to a convention until I was, like, I think 20. Of course, you know, conventions, they were all small conventions at that time. You know, and now they just exploded. But uh, that's got to be something awesome. So uh, to help make that 11-year-old uh, kid comic book collector, his dream come true. Uh, I would uh, like for people to visit his channel, and if you like it, you know, give him a subscription, give him a thumbs up, and, uh, you know, help uh, make uh, some 11-year-old boy's dream come true, you know. That would be a great thing to do. That's got to be something truly awesome. And I don't use that word too lightly, awesome. But, uh, man, wow. I wish I could have been, you know, at that age and have some huge major Comic Con going on and be able to go there. Wow. So, uh, yeah, check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box. And uh, that would uh, be very nice if you would uh, go over there and. Give him a hand, you know, and give him a sub. Um, what else do I have to say? Uh, oh, oh, uh, I was, uh, you know, in order to verify that I was in contact with his father, I, I said, you have your father PM me, so I want to, you know, be sure about all this. And he did, he PM me, and he said it was all up on the level, was, you know, and uh, so it's, going to be uh, something pretty awesome for him to experience that uh, his dad take, taking him there, you know, all the way from Ireland to New York. You know. um, <clears throat> let's see what else. The last time I just finished, let me get this out of here. I had showed you this box here that I had that I brought back from the utility room. That was my mystery box. I got through all, I went through the whole box, you know, I showed it in some videos and rebagged and boarded everything here in this, this box. And then when Gimpy came down, Gimpy 204, Todd, we were over at the utility room and we pulled out another small box, which I knew was there, but I just didn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't didn't get to it yet. So I figured <laughs> might as well pull it out while he's there. So that's this. That's this box, and it looks like another one of those. Uh, with uh, basically, this looks like DC, it has DC in it, and uh, looks like basically DC Bronze Age. So I'm gonna pull the comics out of here, see what's in there. The first two comics I already know because I saw them right away. Oh, one's a Silver Age. And uh, I saw this one right away and knew this was a Neil Adams cover, so I uh, bagged and boarded it over there. This is a uh, 210 from 1969, uh, Batman number 210. And just a great uh, cat woman on the cover, Neil Adams. And then I found this one in there. These were right on top, so. This is another uh, Neil Adams cover, The Man Bat. This is, I think, the second appearance of The Man Bat, and the, his first appearance was in uh, this is Detective Comics. Uh, this is Detective Comics 402, and the first appearance was in 400, The Man Bat. I have that too in my collection back there. But I was happy to find these in there, Neil Adams covers, you know. The uh, early uh, Neil Adams, Batman, and, you know, uh, Detective Comics, Brave and the Bold comics are all, you know, going for pretty high prices. I mean, it's unbelievable, Neil Adams covers for Batman stuff. And just a few years ago, it was like nothing. So that's nice. I'm glad to have these. All right. So I'm going to start pulling them out of here. I don't know. Maybe I should put them in. Put them right there. 
on top of all my other ones that I read back and forth already. So, whatever, this is probably all Batman stuff in here, I think, what I remember. This box used to be filled to the top when I had all these books in 1995, and I think I sold half of them while I was going through that uh, divorce. I needed the money to buy the house, to buy, uh, pay off lawyers and stuff, so I, I can't even remember. I, I can only imagine what I must have sold out of this box, I don't know. But uh, here's Batman 286. And this is a Jim Apparel cover. <laughs> Jim Apparel. When Gimpy was, the reason I'm laughing is because when Gimpy was there, I saw a cover with uh, Jim, uh, uh, had J.A. on it, and I was joking around. I got, I was a little, you know, we had a few beers, and I'm joking around. And he asked, who's that? And I said, jackass, I think. <laughs> it's Jim Apparel. And he was, Jim Apparel is another great artist. I mean, look at this cover, man, with the Joker on the roller coaster. Man, that's iconic. Two Jokers on the roller coaster. Then, uh, this. I don't know. This is uh, Batman 267. Another pretty uh, cool cover, but I don't know who, who did this cover. I don't know. It's not Neil Adams. I don't think it's Jim Apero either. I don't know. Not sure. I gotta repack and board all this stuff too. Well, uh, well, here's a brave and a bold, number one seventeen. Um, this is uh oh, this is the uh, origin. First appearance of the uh, Secret Six. Raven of Bowl 117. Um, Viking Prince. That's probably Joe Kubert. So I've probably got Joe Kubert art in here with uh, because it's Viking Prince and he did all that for the, for the most part. So, yeah. 117. I would have to say in very. Very good. Very good. Uh, Raven of Bowl 120. Out of ba uh, Batman and Commandy. Looks like a 52. Looks like a 52 page or a 68 page uh, giant. Uh, Brave and a Bold 133 with Deadman. I don't know who does the cover. Oh, Jim Apero, J.A. Okay. He was a great artist. I mean, when you look at that, look at that cover, man. He was just a terrific artist as well. And uh, I think underrated. A lot of these guys were such great artists and so underrated. Brave and a bold 90, 99. Brave and a bold 99. And this looks like a Neil Adams cover. Don't quote me on that 100%. I'm not 100% sure of this. I'm pretty sure it's uh, Neil Adams. I'm pretty sure it's a Neil Adams cover, but I could look it up. I've got the price guy right here, but he might not even list it on me. But at any rate, uh, 
That looks a pretty nice shape. I agree too. Probably a very fine minus, I would put it at. Next one I got is a brave and a bold. Uh, what is this? 112 with Mr. Miracle. Batman and Mr. Miracle. And, uh, Another Jim Apero cover. Ooh, I got a lot of brave and bowls in here. I knew I should probably have this in here. Batman in the Metal Man. This is Brave and a Bowl 133. <clears throat> Viking Prince, so that means Joe Kubert, I'll bet. Nice cover. Jim Apero, once again. Some great artwork. Man. Take it out of, the, out of the plastic, you can much see it much better. Pretty, pretty nice shape. These square bounds are really hard to, are really hard to find, you know, in high grit, where, where the, where at least the, uh, uh, the, the spine is in uh, high grade condition. It's hard to find. I think my camera's sticking or something. Brave and a Bowl 114. Batman and Aquaman. These are all from the mid 1970s. Pretty sure here. 67, 1970. This one's probably in good condition. It's got spinal stuff issues with it on the bottom there. What else I got in here? Another Brave and the Bold 132 with uh, Master of Kung Fu. Another fine Jim Apparel cover. Wow, Brave and the Bold 130. The Joker on the cover. It's got to be really big. I don't know who did the cover on here. Maybe Jim Apero. I don't know. Got the Adam. Green Arrow. Two Face and the Joker. Wow, let me take this out of here. This is pretty, pretty interesting. I don't like this the old bags. <laughs> I'm always smelling the bags. Got some uh, folds over here. Some bags. Huh? Otherwise, it's in pretty nice shape. Great cover. I wonder how long this video's been going. This is uh, Brave and the Bold 200. What do we have here anyway? Oh, this is the uh, it's a Jim Apparel cover. This is the uh, 
uh, the first appearance of Batman in the Outsiders. Flavor to bowl 200. Okay, I'm going to pull out one more and then. Uh, put this in there so I don't I can't see what the next book is gonna be. Uh this is Batman and the Creeper 143. Ah this has uh the human target. Uh the human target. I think there were a couple of different characters that uh portrayed the human target and I think this might have his origin or one of the origins I, I don't know that's this guy probably had two different characters and maybe three different origins I don't know but uh, I don't think this is his first uh, I think he was a Golden Age character first, and I think that this is uh, when they revi revived him, but I don't think this is his first appearance. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's an early appearance of Human Target, and I think it might have uh, an origin story in there. Well, okay, that's what I got, and that's what I'm going to do. i got another yeah, about halfway, about halfway through that box already. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, check out uh, Just Luke's channel and uh, give him a sub and help make that kid's dream come true, man. You'll be doing, you'll be feeling good about it. A hundred, he gets a hundred subs by August first. He's on his way to New York to the Comic Con. So, till next time, people. Take care, live long, and be well.